our tour guides for the evening, Elder and Mrs. Inkansa Mensa. I encourage us all to relax and enjoy the evening's ride. So Elder and Mrs., your audience. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So um, I'd like to know if you can hear us um, clearly. Yes, very loud and clear, and we can see you as well. <laughs> okay. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we deem it uh, a great privilege and honor to uh, be a part of your love tour this season. And uh, we are grateful to you uh, for the invitation. And um, we hope and pray that at the end of today, um, you all would have, um, the purpose for which this meeting was set up um, would be reached. So um, before we start, okay, I wanted him to say something, but he says I should go ahead. So um, the topic for this evening is quite uh, interesting. And uh, traffic light relationships, um, red, green, and yellow flags. Um, I found it very, very interesting um, because there are traffic lights all over this country. You know. And uh, we know that these are things that lights that you can't ignore. Wherever you go, if you ignore a traffic light, then it means that you are in trouble. So for me, it, it began, everything began in the Garden of Eden. We are talking about relationships. We are talking about relationships that are leading to marriage, not just any relationship. So the first relationship ever that led to marriage um, was in the Garden of Eden. And we all know the story very well, you know, where Eve thought that uh, even though she was created in the image of God, living in a perfect environment, um, the serpent managed to convince Eve that she needed to eat an apple to be wise and to become like God, even though she already had God's image. Now, Eve took this apple, ate of it, and then went and gave Adam. Adam also took it without any hesitation or any questions, whatever. And then he ate it too. And then here we are today discussing red, yellow, and green flags. Um, if you read the story of Adam and Eve, you can see that clearly there were red flags in the information that uh, the devil was giving to Eve, but she decided to ignore it all, you know, and just go ahead and uh, be moved by what she was seeing. You know, she saw the fruit, it was pleasing to the eyes. So despite all the red flags that were in the information that the devil was giving to her, she ignored it all and then managed to convince Adam to also ignore all the red flags. And you know that um, when you are driving around town and you run through a red light, the police, if they are there, they would arrest you and charge you. And the reason why they do this is because um, they will tell you that the decision you took to run through the red light, it can lead to a fatal accident and can cause death either for yourself or for other motorists and even uh, pedestrians. So running through the red light is not a good idea. You know, it can cause your arrest. You can be detained. You can even be sent to jail for a number of days for running through the red light. So red lights are not supposed to be ignored. Green light, when you are the traffic light and the light goes green, you are supposed to move. You know, you can't be at the traffic light and then the light is green and then you are standing there. Everybody behind you will be honking and honking and honking if perhaps you know your attention is somewhere else, to draw your attention to the fact that the light is green and you have to move. So you can't also ignore the green light. Now the yellow light, when you get there and the light is yellow, it means you either get ready to stop or you get ready to do what? To go. So the yellow light goes both ways. Some people get there and when they see the yellow light, they try and stop. Some people get there when they see the yellow light. It means that, oh, let me go before the red light comes. So the yellow light, you can either stop or you can either go. So for our discussions today, 
Um, the first thing for us to note is that uh, marriage is till death do us part. Marriage is till death do us part. That is God's intention for marriage. He didn't set us out to marry and then <laughs> and then we get to the middle somewhere and then we decide that we don't want to go ahead again. So we go our separate ways. It's supposed to be till death do us part. And when marriages end in separation or in divorce, clearly that's not God's purpose. And sometimes it seems like, you know, the separation or the divorce is okay. But then people who come out of such relationships, they have scars that follow them for the rest of their lives. Some even pass on the trauma that they went through in separation and divorce. They pass it on to their children. And then sometimes it, it is passed on from one generation to another. I'm going to try and make, we're going to try and make this presentation very short and simple so that um, we can ask questions and then it can become as interactive as possible. The first light, which is green. Um, green means what? Green means go. So clearly when we say green light, we're talking about character traits that are, that are seen in someone who is a prospective wife or husband. And then these character traits, when you see them, it means that, oh, this person is ready. Um, this person is qualified. This person can go all the way till death do us part. When we read the Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, can, if someone can read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 for us, I would appreciate it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Amen. Amen. And then also Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Amen. Amen. So for someone to have the green light as a prospective husband, it means that this person should be aware of the fact that he is the head of the home, right? You are going to be the head of the home. So if you see someone who doesn't think that being the head of the home is important, then the person doesn't really have a green light. For you to see that green light, it means that this person understands his role. And there's something my husband always says, being the head of the home and being the head of the church, Christ is the head of the church. So the responsibility on you as a head of the home is enormous. So if you do not realize that that's your responsibility, as the husband, then you don't have the green light. So when you meet someone and you're studying the person and you're courting the person and you realize that this person doesn't have this knowledge, this person doesn't have this understanding, then definitely it's not a green light. But when you see someone with this understanding that the husband is ahead of the home, just as Christ is ahead of the church, then you see a green light over there. Genesis chapter two, verse 18 speaks about the wife being a suitable helpmeet for the husband. What does it mean? It means that this, there is someone who is on a journey and needs help. This person cannot be on the journey by themselves. So they need help, but they don't just need any help. They need a suitable help. So, as a wife, a prospective wife, if you don't understand the fact that you're supposed to be a suitable help to the man who's ahead of the home, then there's no green light there. So when you meet someone and you're having a conversation with that, with that one and that person doesn't even understand 
that as a wife, you are created. God gave you the responsibility to be a suitable help meet to someone. Then you know that. Going on for both the husband and wife, spiritually, they have to have a relationship with God. Mentally, they have to be of a sound mind and they have to have good reasoning. Physically, they have to be healthy and strong, be very mindful of their health. Emotionally, they have to be mature in the way they think, not just in age. You know, I'm old, so I have a green light. No, they have to be mature in the way they think and then also have control of their emotions. They have to have the ability to, to communicate. You know, there has to be great communication. Financially, yes, they have to be sound, gainfully employed with a clear vision of who they want to be career-wise. The sense of providing and the sense of helping to provide should be there. The sense to protect on the side of the man is there. So if a prospective spouse has no knowledge of all these things I've said, and they do not have the understanding that this is what it takes to be on the journey, they don't have the green light. Now, everything I have said here is what makes you think that, oh, this person is in the green light. So this person is ready to go. There's also the yellow flag. Like I said, when you get to the yellow light, you know, you can either stop or you can either go. There are some issues that there are flags anyway, but they do not make or break a marriage. You know, there are things that can be managed. Yeah, in, in a marriage or in a relationship, there are things that can be married. Things like tribe, the type of marriage ceremony you want to have, your skin color, your height, your weight, your educational level, your social status, whether this person is romantic or not, whether they are outgoing or reserved, cooking skills, you know, housekeeping skills, whether they are rich or they are wealthy, whether they own their own house or a car. These things are flags. Yes, they are important, but... They are not things that would make or break a relationship. A, rela a relationship, And then finally, we come to the red flags. Um, because we are Christians, clearly, you cannot be matched with someone who's an atheist. That is a clear red flag. When you have differences in religious beliefs and practices, clear red flag. When this person thinks that submission is not important, respect is not important, love and affection should be relegated to the background, this person is not thoughtful. You know, they think that, oh, abuse is normal, probably because they grew up in a, an abusive home or they've seen abuse going on around them. They think it's normal. Red flag. When they have a hostile attitude towards external family members, that is a red flag. When they are not mindful of the way they speak and the way they act, they do not care where they are. They do not care what they do. It's all about them. That is a clear red flag. Sexual orientation and sexual practices. Some people just don't care. That is a clear red flag because in all this, we are Christians and the Bible clearly guides us on how we should behave as far as all these things are concerned. So because we are Christians, when you see all this in a, in a, in a prospective spouse, you know that these are clear red flags. When this person is controlling, when this person is secretive, it means that you know this person wants to be in charge no matter what. I say this, nobody says anything. Or I am very secretive. You do not know anything about me. Nothing at all. I just pop up from anywhere. I say I want to meet you and then I drag you along and then you are ready to go. You do not know anything about me. That for me is a red flag. So because I want to make this as short as possible so we can ask a lot of questions. Um, this is what I'll say. Do not ignore red flags. When you see a red flag, it means you should stop. Do not ignore green flags either because these green flags mean that, yes, this person is ready to go. Yellow flags will neither make or break your marriage because these things can be managed. Marriage is good or even great, but it is not a requisite for heaven so that when you see a red flag, you decide to ignore and say, let me marry at all costs. You should educate yourself as much as possible. That's what you're doing right now. Prayer cannot be out of the picture because 
prayer is communicating with God. He knows all there is to know about relationships and marriage. And whilst we communicate with him, he also communicates with us through his word. So you pray, you read the word of God, then you get the information you need. Everyone has a flag. So don't just be looking out for red flags or green flags or yellow flags in other people. What are your flags? What are your red flags? What are your green flags? What are your yellow flags? Get to know them. Be sincere and honest with yourself. You can even conduct a SWOT analysis on yourself. Your strengths are your green flags. Your weaknesses are your, your red flags. Your opportunities, green flags. Threats, red flags. Get to know them because everyone has them. Don't just go out there looking for these things in other people. Analyze yourself. Find out what your flags are and be willing to work on them. So I'll, I'll end it here and then ask her um, if my husband has something to say. Because <laughs> I want us to be as interactive as possible and ask as many questions as we can so that we have a discussion. So I'll end it here and then ask if there are any um, questions and contributions. Can you hear us? Hello? Yes, I can. Very loud and clear. Okay. Um, Kwesiani, kindly ask your question. Good evening, um, everyone, and good evening to um, Mrs. Encanta and um, Richmond. I was, I was looking forward to hearing Richmond's voice. Um, <laughs> or maybe to, I, I thought I was going to start with a song, but we'll see. Oh. We'll get <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, the Encanta the family, I have a question, and I'm going to paint the scenario. So I'm a young woman um, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, I have reached um, an age where I would have loved to be married. I'm 30 years plus. Um, I've, I've been waiting for a, a young man in the church to ask me to marry, but it's not coming. I have recently found met a young man um, who is not a Seventh-day Adventist, and we've been speaking, and he looks, he looks, um, he looks promising. What should I do? Is that a red flag, or should that be a red flag for me, or... A yellow flag that I can work on to get to become green. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I knew that this question was going to come on. Um, to be honest with you, a couple of years ago, um, I would have said that straight away, red flag. A couple of years ago, I would have said no red flag but i have come to understand that um even though they may not have um let me see do i say fundamental fundamental beliefs yes we, we, we may not agree on certain things we have seen uh, marriages between adventists and non-adventists that have survived and have gone on peacefully without any issues but then there are certain things that you should be very clear on if you are a woman and you're marrying a man who is not of the same uh, faith you should be prepared that because he's the head of the home there are certain things you may have to submit to he may not be a bad person per se he reads the bible he prays he takes his church seriously but then are you willing to submit to him in all things? That is what you should consider. If you are able to submit to him, even though you're of, of a different faith, if you are able to submit to him in all things, because I know a couple, this woman, the husband allows her to come to church. No issues at all. But then this is what he says. You go to church on Saturday. We would also go to church together on Sunday. So she goes to church on Sabbath, and on Sunday, she and her husband and their children, they also go to church on Sundays or on Sundays. So that is the situation she is in. And 
I've had the opportunity to ask her, um, would she have done it on her? Would she have? She said, oh, well, it's not a bad situation to be in, but she still wishes that her husband was an Adventist. There's peace at home. There are no issues with, you know, don't go to church, don't go here. But then she still wishes that her husband was an Adventist. So right now, it is difficult. I wouldn't say no. I would say that get to know this person. Because indeed, if this person is a, um, is a Christian who believes in the word of God, say it would be difficult for that person to say, oh, don't go to your church. Just, just come to my church. They would allow you to go to your church. But then there's also the situation whereby they would want you to visit their church from time to time. So that's what I'll say about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, Seth, thank you for, for, for that question. And I, and, I, and I knew um, again it was going to come up. Okay. So I think largely I agree with my wife. Uh, but I will, I will put this under the yellow flag. You need to see how you can manage this. For me, um, and 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 the, and let me let me clarify this. It's not about whether the the person goes to church on the Sabbath or it's 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 going to be a Seventh Day Adventist. I believe that this person ought to be a Christian. Okay, he's a Christian. He believes in the Word of God. He he be, he he believes in prayer. He believes in fellowship and all of that. And I can assure you that if the young lady who is also looking for this husband, prospective husband, who, who is looking for a husband and all of that, is also very serious about his or her um, church, this will not come so lightly. I can assure you, it will be a very tough decision for her. That, and that decision, in my view, ought to be prayerfully considered. And then at the end of the day, you make a choice. And so, um, first of all, I just want to say that um, it doesn't have to be oh, because he's a Seventh-day Adventist. We all see him going to church, and, you know, and so he's a green light, that kind of thing. You ought to know that this person is a Christian because we've had seven, two Seventh-day Adventists who have been married and have had serious issues. We've also had um, one Adventist, one non-Adventist who have married and have I've had it. Okay, there are there will still be issues. So me, for me, in my case, this is 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 a no to me. And the reason why I say it's a no is that I've come to realize that Christianity is a way of life. It's like torture. You don't easily, unless I'm not interested in what I'm doing. If I'm interested, I'm convinced about it. I would want the one I love to also taste it. So there will be a discussion that will just sometimes. Between the two of you, that's fine. You, are, you might manage. You have other. But when the children come in, you get them confused. So, um, as my, my wife said, I will not say, wait, I mean, straight away, it's a no. Yeah. But it ought to be prayerfully considered. And I can assure you that in all of that, if you are very serious about your Christian life, it wouldn't be a decision you would take so lightly. So that's... that's so so it's, it's, it's a yellow flag. Exactly. So that's that's... I don't know whether I said you're okay. Where's he? Hello. Hello. All right. Hello. Yes, yes. If I can, if I can add a thing or two um, to the presentation, and I think it's excellent. Um, it's a very excellent presentation from uh, the encounters. But if I can just add two things very quickly, Anita, if I'm uh... Yes, you may. Allowed. So I see I see life itself to be a, a, a journey. And there are 20 destinations that we can get to. And we all know what those destinations are. There's no middle ground. Or you don't make it to heaven. Those are the only two destinations. Get either or that destination. Nation. And in joining that vehicle, in our in our case, is our seven the adventures, we can go your network. Yeah, yeah. 
Hello, Elder Kwesi. I think your network is 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 breaking. All right. While we wait for Elder Kwesi to come back, um, there's a question. Um, in the presentation, um, you, you mentioned that ethnicity is a yellow flag, and um, there are stories of families who have outrightly rejected. Um, suitors on the basis of ethnicity. I would like to know, and it, like you rightfully said, the yellow may mean get ready to stop or get ready to go. So in which category will we classify the ethnicity and what would you have to say to persons or families who um, reject suitors on the basis of ethnicity? All right, thank you, Anita. So with the issue of ethnicity, um, I've come to realize that um, sometimes um, the decision to stop comes from some experience or even something someone has heard. I've heard that these people are like this. I've heard that these people are like that. So because of that, I will not allow my child to do this. Or I saw this person did from this tribe or this ethnic group did this to me. So because of that, I will not allow my child, you know. So it's really not about character. Most of the time, I would say 80% of the time, it's about I've heard that these people are this or this individual who comes from this place or that place did this to me. So because of that, it's a no-go area. But you know, the strange thing is most of the time, these people who do not want people from anywhere, any other place in our local areas are quick to go to people who are even outside our country. Like I may not marry somebody from one part of the region or the other, but then I would marry somebody outside Ghana who is an American, who is a British, who is an Italian. I would go for that one, but I wouldn't go for somebody who is so most of the time, for me, that is a strict, is a straight yellow flag. It will always be a yellow flag, you know, because you cannot say that people who are from, everyone from your tribe is perfect. Everyone from the other tribe is not good. You know, that is not the case. So, yes, it's a yellow flag. Yeah, um, um, and just to add to to the word, um, I think that also as Christians, we need to be very careful about the way we look down on um, some tribes other than ours. Um, you remember the story of uh, Miriam and, and her brothers, Moses and Aaron. You know, when Aaron, Moses married uh, an Ethiopian, you know, Zipporah, what happened was that his sibling, I mean, Miriam and Aaron, especially Miriam, criticized him so much to the extent that God got so angry and visited them um, with uh, leprosy. So for me, I, I, I believe that we are all one people. If there are issues we need to look at and categorize as red and green and all of that, it should actually center around character. one's relationship with God and not where one comes from. Of course, let me also admit that you need to be compatible in a lot of, of ways. But someone you, you might have worked with, you might have been associated with for a while, you get to know and see your com compatibility in terms of the things you want to do, the things he likes, the things you like, and so on and so forth. But to, to deny someone on purely on the basis of where he or she comes from, I think doesn't make one a good Christian. That's that's my personal view. Um, I, I believe that there ought to be because of your life, because of this and that that I've seen that in my view, 
the final destination might be hampered. I, and so I am just taking a break. Uh, we need to be very careful about some of those things. And especially those of us parents who, who are always, most of the time, behind some of those things. Because of the, some experience, like Adwa said, we might have had with someone from this type or the other. We think that we generalize, and it's not fair uh, uh, to, to do that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, l let me add a little bit. Because, but because it's a yellow flag, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any issues. There may be some issues, especially with language. If you are going to be amongst a family uh, or people who do not, you do not understand their language, they do not understand your language, then it means that communicating with them will be a challenge. So even if you decide that, okay, I'm going to go ahead, you know, be mindful of the fact that language might be a challenge. Be willing to, you know, how do you communicate with, with people? know your language or whose language you do not know so because it's not just you and your husband it's your extended families as well so yes if you decide that it's yellow i'm going to go ahead then find ways to improve on how you're going to communicate with them but then if you decide that because of this i'm going to put a stop to it i don't think that 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 would be bad i mean at the end of the day it's your it's your decision. It's not going to make or break anything. Okay, thank you so much. Um, another question. So, um, current, in recent times, there have been um, issues with sexual differences. And as Christians, we know we are to be chased before the marriage. Now, a story was told of um, a beautiful young lady who kept herself got married to a gentleman, had a lavish wedding, and then they got married, and then she realized that this gentleman was gay. Now, there was no way, I mean, in court, she would have found out. Now, we know that uh, sexual differences are a red flag. The challenge for we youth today is how do we identify that red flag? So um this that one I can assure you 100%. If you're about to get into a marriage relationship with someone, you need to be as prayerful as possible. You really need to be as prayerful and I'm telling you when you pray God will reveal to you, unless, of course, sometimes uh, you, you can bear with me that sometimes we see little, little signs and you see them that these may be, but then we overlook them. But trust me, God is concerned about marriage. His vision is for marriage to last your lifetime. So if you pray about these things, he knows that we can't see them with our naked eyes. If you pray sincerely about these things, I believe with all my heart that he would reveal it to you. Because if you sit down and you counsel this lady and you ask her certain questions, you would realize that, oh, mm, I saw this, but I thought it was nothing. I saw that. Most of the time in counseling, these things come up. When you meet them one-on-one -on -one and you are having a conversation with them, you realize that they saw these signs, but then they decided to overlook them. Yeah, um... Just, just to add it. In fact, on this, our only safeguard, in my view, is prayer. And um, again, sometimes we must also be very intentional, you know, about maybe we are overtaken by uh, sometimes, even though they call it love, I don't see it, it's always love. Sometimes it's also an infatuation, you know, it's also a, a certain thing that will lead you. Sometimes we speak to you, some people talk to you, you don't even want to. Or yeah. what to listen. And 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 so um you might see some of them especially and that and one way to go about uh, to look at this is that that's why a lot of counselors, relationship counselors, um advise against entering into a relationship so quickly. You take, time you take your time to know each other, and some of these things, some way, somehow will come up. And so as we pray, but 
um, if it doesn't happen, and I'm and this one I'm just uh, thinking aloud. If it doesn't, it doesn't happen, and you find yourself in a, a relationship like that, and then you you pray, take him or her through this, and he doesn't want. Uh, for me, I can I can stay in it. Unfortunately, I'm I'm just telling you. Even though we are we have said from the uh, 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 presentation that the only one thing God hates is is divorce, but I believe that. There are things that God says they are also, um, um, he hates them. One of them, it's this kind of orientation, you know, uh, 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 lesbians, homosexuals, and the rest of it. The Bible is very categorical about it. They won't enter into heaven. So I pray that it doesn't happen. And that's why anytime I'm answering some of this question, I say that, Lord, lead us not into temptation. <laughs> you know, th those are the things you, you might want to. As God to do. Um, to, to, to stretch it out, you can even say that, well, if you decide to annul the marriage, because you know, in the wedding, before the wedding vows, they'd ask you, exactly. do you know of any lawful impediments yeah. why you both cannot be joined together? Yeah. So after the marriage, if you find this out, then it means that there was some kind of deception yeah. that was there. So yeah, I, I think that the marriage could be annulled on, on this ground. I'm not 100% sure, yeah. but I, I, well, I, think I, so. I think so. Yeah. Anita. Right. Yes, Anita. Elder. Yes, Elder. Yes, uh, you're the only one asking the questions. Is it that oh, the right to the right you? Yeah, they, and I then think you read them out it. or what? Um, At the moment, it's just basically me sharing questions that have come up to me, not here, but. Okay. 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 And then let me take this opportunity to remind us if you have any question, then Cancer Men says already. They are all ours tonight, so <laughs> let us feel free. And uh, I can assure you that they would really be open and non-judgmental. So this is a non-judgmental space. This is a space where we want to encourage interaction. And so feel free to ask any question that you deem um, necessary. Is Alden in back? I have a question. Can I go Please on? go ahead. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Eric. Um, I'm actually listening and watching you from Columbus, Ohio. My question is, please, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Yes, yes. We can. so my question is, if I have a date with a lady, and the lady is an Adventist. I've been taught in my church that it is relevant or necessary to marry from the church because of faith. But this is a situation I found myself in love with someone outside the church. The person is not ready to compromise to be a member of the church. My family opposing to that effect. What should I do? All right. Um, what's the name again? Sorry. Eric Murphy. Eric, 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 thank you so much for this, this question. Um, I think it's, it's, it's quite similar to what uh, uh, Dakwesi asked in some way. Um, and I, I, in my, in, in answering, I said this. Should it be that you say, okay, your church says this. Or it should be that, okay, this is my conviction. Do you believe in your in your church's fundamental beliefs, for instance? Do you, do you agree with the fundamental beliefs? Do you see that um, marriage is like, or let me say religion, or Christianity is also a way of life. It's a way we do our things and so can have effect even in the relationship. Do you believe so? If you, you answer in the affirmative, then I think, in my view, that uh, you need to, again, consider this very carefully. For, for instance, before I, I, I got married, I had my own, um, how, do, how do I put it? There were things I had outlined for myself. And one of the key things I had 
I had done or have done was in respect of someone who doesn't share the same faith with me. I was so serious about it. There was no way I was going to compromise on it. You, I might love you if I met you and, and I loved you. I might love you, but when I come and I feel that this is an, you are also so, um, you know, you are so determined that this is also an area you are not going to go off. Um, then, unfortunately, I wasn't going to be able to go with you. But as uh, my wife said initially, if you think that is something you can work on, you know, and manage, mm -hmm. then I, I believe that you must you might consider it. But please do that prayerfully, prayerful. because <laughs> marriage is is a lifelong thing. Like she said. You are not going to get into it and go off like hit and run. You went and I mean you didn't hear your expectations to you are going off. That's not what the Bible teaches us. So please, uh sometimes I understand you're a human being. You're overtaken by by a whole lot of things. Uh please don't remove your your I mean, and I'm using that advice. Don't re remove your, your your thinking cap. Make sure that it still comes into the consideration also. So um, it's, a, it's not a, a yes or no straight answer. It's one, your expectations in life, your principles that guide you, your philosophy of life, and so on and so forth. And so look at all of that. And I believe that at the end of the day, if you find your church to be special, you want your loved one to be part of it. And so uh, you, 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 you can look at it that way. That's the little I can say. Of it. No, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate that. But what if, I, I really adore the answer you provided, but what if, um, I'm, um, let's put it this way, um, the church recognized me as, as um, a strong believer. I've been working my house out in the church, helping the church in the, every possible way that I can. And then yeah. um, because of my decision to get married outside the church, my pastors refused to bless the church, uh, the, the, the marriage. Yeah. Now, in this situation, am I forced to leave the church because I found the love of my life outside the church? The lady is not ready to compromise with my church. I believe church is a fellowship. We can only serve God through the heart. And now the church says, because I am not marrying from the church, um, they are not blessing my marriage. I think it's quite complicated, but I need um, uh, um, um, your personal view about it. Okay, so um, um, I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, <laughs> the pastors, or maybe the church, will not allow you to have the ceremony in the church. The pastors will not. Say. It doesn't mean that your marriage will not be blessed. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I get the point whereby because you're a member of the church, you want it to be done there, but then it's a church policy. It's not, it doesn't mean that your marriage is doomed or um, God is the presence of God is not in your marriage, but it is so happens that that is a church policy. I doubt that because of that, you would say, if you say you want to leave the church because the pastor did not put his hands on the two of you and bless your marriage, that would not be a very good reason to leave the church because I don't think that that is why you are in the church. You are in church because one day you, you want the pastor to bless your marriage when you get married one day, you understand? So I think that, um, it should not be a reason for anyone to leave the church because the pastor's not blessing your marriage doesn't mean your marriage will not be blessed. I don't know if I've answered your your your, your question well enough. Um, yes, yes, you've you've done marvelously well. But does that mean I, I should pay my tithe to the church? Does that yes. mean I should contribute to the church if that is are, yes? Then why am I in the church? You are still okay. So you know you are still a member of the church. And the wow. purpose for you, you know, you didn't come to church. You are not in church because your dream of being a Christian is that someday the pastor will bless your wedding or your marriage. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I do. I do. Uh -huh. then, exactly. Then, then therefore, my responsibility to the church is questionable because if the church is not helping me in any way, the church is not taking me to school or whatever, and I have the only privilege for the church to bless my marriage and say no, then... Mom? Okay, uh, Eric. Sir, can, can I can I come yes, in? Please. Please. All right. So, um, you, you know that the church has a set of principles that guide us. You know that, right? 
Yes, yes, please, sir. Okay. You know that um do you do you see, for instance, the Seven day Adventist Church as a unique church for you? Do you see it? Is, is it it's a unique? A it's, it's a fellowship that I'm I'm a member of. Okay. And I'm saying that you see it as a unique fellowship, for instance, relative to the others. You see it that way. I see it as one of God's churches. Okay. Okay. Great. So what what made you to decide to be part of this church? And and you don't need to just be answering. I'm, I just want you to also think uh, about it as I I I, I ask the, the questions or as I come in. You, you understand? So um, there are a lot of so many denominations in this world. Okay, you might have been part of this church because you were born into it. One, or I, in some point of your life, or at some point in your life, you decided that okay, this is. That I, I I would want to be associated with because of A B C D, and normally when you become a member of this church, we go through certain studies, and then there's baptism. Before the baptism, we are told a lot of things. This we keep this, we keep that, and all of that. I believe you might have issues with, uh, and that's legitimately so. The fact that well, if um, the church decides not to bless my marriage, I think this that provision ought to be stopped. Maybe you, it, it's something you can easily talk about. And I don't think it's out of place yeah. to be thinking that, oh, that this, 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 pra this practice ought to be looked at. But you see, until uh, something is done about it, this is what remains. And this is the point. And let me tell you, all those that belong to the other churches, if you go pick their, 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 their women or their men, it's not like they are also happy. Let me tell you, it, it's not. It's never that they are also happy that we, we also raise this lady, raise this gentleman from this church, and somebody they comes. Also desire they also that. desire that. I mean, they are, they are members, I mean, members who marry, marry each other and stuff like that. So it's not out of place the church does that, and this is what happens. The reason why the church doesn't do that is the fact that if you don't have a counselor within the church like your pastor, the pastor or the, the, the individuals involved are not obliged to attend to the pastor if there are issues and they call them. And I, I have, as an elder, I've, I've seen that before. Sometimes you call someone who, but, I mean, one of them is an Adventist. The other person, they have issues. The other person says, I mean, to her, who is your, who is that elder? I'm not answerable to them and that kind of thing. So yes, it's, it's an area we can still be looking at, but assistance now, Eric, I still believe that once I believe is one of those, the church is, is, is a unique fellowship, like you rightly said, and I, I, I believe in their principles and all of that, I would try as much as possible to ensure that I get some from within the church. If I, if don't, I don't, if I don't, and it happens that it's outside. If it's I demand church, it happens quite a lot. It's all right. We will all come. We all come. And support you. It's just that we will not organize like we, that our classes in, in, not be just, but, the church, but we, we we come we come and be part of that way. so uh uh don't let that affect you so much once you are convinced about the values the principles the beliefs of this church then you must be able to do that and then eventually who knows and in most of the time i can assure you the lives that we live would attract our partners to be part of the church we belong to Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We have um, two questions. The first one is, um, how can we deal with sexual compatibility or incompatibility before marriage? Um, that's it. <laughs> so that's it, eh? That's yes. the first yeah. Hmm. So I, I would like, I, I, I wish that someone can explain to me what they mean by sexual compatibility. You know, when the, the youth talk about that quite a lot, I wish that they would explain to me what they mean by sexual compatibility. All right, but you know. I, 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 probably their definition is different from, from mine. 
Like, what's the definition you need? <laughs> so she still, she I mean, still... Anita, can they, can they give me an example? I okay. mean, this, this is a free open space. No one should be shy. Can they yes. give me an example? Yes. Um, having, um, as a, a young married couple and then a former single, I believe that the sexual compatibility has to do with that um, matched up sexual energy. Um, mm -hmm. More like vibe. You know, the same way we talk about um compatibility in the sense that oh I I, I could have a couple um a, a partner that we could talk, we have similar interests. I believe that these principles, but in a sexual context, obviously it's interesting because it's in a Christian context, because how do you talk about sexual compatibility when you are a single person and you are obviously not sexually active? So as a man person i would say sexual sexual compatibility would have to do with matched up energy obviously in the context of whether um you know it, it's i would say the same but balanced for example you hear people say oh someone um i don't know whether it's the right place to discuss this because we have singles but someone <laughs> likes sex too much and someone too is not interested okay someone would want to explore uh, someone would want to be conservative in a sense that is my understanding having you know be married but i believe that's what the youth is also talking about somebody you can vibe with so for example if i am i'm dating someone and i want to hold the person's hand the person doesn't want to hold my hand i want to give the person a peck i want to kiss i want to hug maybe that person's boundary is no hugging and all that so how do i ascertain what the marriage um, the sexual compat compatibility will be in the marriage, even though I'm single and I'm not supposed to cross the, the line. Okay, so um, all these these things that you, these things you have said, most of the time, our orientation leading to the vibe we have is either based on what we have seen in movies, what we have read, or what we have experienced. These are the three things that inform someone to have a certain vibe or, you know, a vibe about sexuality. It's either what you have read, what you have seen in movies or what you have experienced. And I believe that when you are, when you are in a relationship, you, you, are, you should be, be with someone who is your friend. You can have open and plain conversations with your friends. If you are in a relationship with someone who doesn't even want to talk, about sexuality, then that's a red flag. Like the moment you mention anything about sex, they, they don't want to have any conversation. It, that's a, it, it's got nothing to do with being a Christian. It's got nothing to do with it. You should be able to have open and free conversations about those the sex. The thing you don't have to do is actually engage in it, but you should be able to have open conversations. No pretense, no secrets. You should be able to have these conversations. Or maybe you, you, you see, you've seen something in the movies or some you are somewhere, some people are discussing something or you've read something, you understand? I mean, Anita, holding hands, you want to hold my hand, I don't want to hold your hand. That one, I mean, I'm yet to see single people who are not, single people are holding hands all over the place. It's rather those who are married who are sometimes not even comfortable holding hands, you know, in, in public. But single people are hugging each other and holding their hands and, you know, giving pecks on their kitchen, in, cheeks in these days. You see it happening all over the place. But, but, but the interesting thing is that when they are in a relationship, they don't do that to, for people mm. to see. They don't hold their hands. They don't do that. That's like you, you, you yeah. mentioned about it being married. Married people. They don't but, want but the same, the, exactly. that they, they are, you know. So but, this vibe is mostly informed by these three things. Yeah. So when you are having when you are when you are dating or courting someone, you should be able to have the freedom to speak on these things because when you begin to talk like friends, these some of these things they come out. As for um, someone likes it too much, someone likes it too little. You see, whether you like we we agree or not, men would always it's the way they were created. Men would like to have sex more than women. The way women are created and the way our bodies are. We definitely do, cannot match up to their energy. That is, that is a fact. But it also doesn't mean that we cannot work on it. 
you know, you can't say because I'm a woman and I don't want it, then I don't want it at all. Then that's a problem. But I believe that you see, Anita, in all these things, sometimes we want to take God out of sex. We think that sex is just a physical thing. So this one, yeah, we can't let God in this space. But he is the one who created it. We didn't come up with sex ourselves. It's something that God created. So sometimes when we are talking, we like Pastor Kamadon we say we want to sanitize it, you know, and put it aside. We can't talk about it in the church. We can't talk about it among Christian groups. When we are dating, we can't talk about it. Or we only wait when we are married. Now we want to talk. No, we should be able to talk about it freely when we are friends, when we are having discussions like this. When we begin to talk, you know that, oh, this person's vibe is like this. That person's vibe is like that. I think that when we do that, it, it helps. Thank yeah, you. Especially, yeah, especially in this in this time that we, we are in. You know, <laughs> there are a lot of information around. There are a lot of information. And you might be amazed that the, the, the dosage of information individuals and this young people have. And so I think it's it's just about the openness, you know. Um, the honesty with which we approach some of these issues and discuss them. You know, I used to always say that, I, and I've told my wife before, way back, before we got married, I used to say that these things, uh, we don't teach them. That's how God has made us. When it's, the time is up, um, it's up. It flows. You know, it flows and that kind of thing. But thankfully, now we have a lot of information that individuals can assess. Most, most of the challenges come from those who have had experiences. They have had sexual experiences yeah. with maybe multiple partners yeah. and then they're expecting somebody who is a novice to match up to their energy that's where the problem is but if we are all coming from a blank slate and we are all trying to learn we are all discovering each other and we are learning most of the time we're patient with each other and we grow together but when one person is so exposed you know because of interactions they have had and the other person is a complete novice that's where we have these challenges coming Thank you so much. We have two questions then. Abby. Uh, you... Okay. Another question. Yes. I hope my internet is stable. Yes. Um, welcome. I was, just, I was just telling somebody now that as the four, we like dodging the sex question too much. Yeah, we do. We do. All of it. Uh, but I think we should have a frank discussion about it. As as the uh, our our hosts have mentioned, marriage is something that when you go in, you don't have the chance to step out. And one of the key things that is breaking up marriages is sex. The other one has to do with money. Today we're not talking about even the money yet. <laughs> and so we gotten there yet. Yeah. If if we have to have the, the discussion and this is more for um, those who are yet to come in and even those of us who are married. It is important that you you when you are when you are taking your decision, it should be with somebody that you find sexually attractive. Now, there's the menace of side chicks who can do anything. And before you know it, your your man, your husband is gone. Or um, I don't know if, whether they are they are male, 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 male they chicks are. or they are. They are. <laughs> I'm more be careful. Now we have we have our women going for uh, physical training and all manner of things, and it's only God who knows what goes on in there. But if you're a young person who is about to get married. Sex is a very important component of every man. And you must make sure that whoever you select, you find the person sexually attractive. It is not wrong to be sexually attracted to someone. God himself designed that for us. And I like what Abi said, that men always have the energy. And so if you are a woman and you cannot match or you cannot um, bring yourself to match the energy, then there's a red flag there. If you are a man and you also want it excessively, then there's also a red flag there. But you should, you should be able to have a frank discussion about it at some point in time in your courtship. It should come up, and that's why marriage is for adults. You should have a frank discussion about what your proclivities are, what, you, what your fantasies are, and whether the other person sees it as something that they can also share. But that discussion should be had. And have a very frank discussion about it if for any reason you see something that is not right about your sexual inclinations, by all means, take a time, take time to, to, to look at it carefully. You'll be surprised. There are men who are married 
Adventist men who are married, who are attracted to young boys mm. in our church. Yeah, yeah. And so on and so forth. So it is a very important thing. And it's sex is driving out a lot of people outside of their marriage. Some people are married, but they are, they are having all kinds of uh, illicit relationships with other people because of sex. And so let's have frank discussions about it before we get married. And for those of us who are married, let us also have a discussion about it and make sure that we can solve whatever problems there are um, collectively. I don't know if there will be time to talk about money, but I, I guess this, those are my contributions for now. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if you can't frankly talk about sex, don't get married. Simple. Do not get married. <laughs> and, 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 and one of the, the things, I'm sure we didn't go into specifics as to, for instance, what, what constitutes um, green flags, Maybe key things you might you might you might look at. Maybe before we end, we might touch on a few of them. Can talk about that. Um, the the other thing is that and 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 just to take it from where Seth ended, marriage is entered into by, in my view, mature people, people who are mature. You see, and one of the key things we always overlook, it's not just about it's not maturity in age. You are you are, you are forty years, and so you have to get married. And the way you think. I, I call it that's that's the EI, the emotional intelligence. You ought to be able to <laughs> to manage yourself, to be able to. I mean, I remember when I was I was young, I used to say that me, it didn't matter whether you were a professor. If I met you and I was interested, I didn't I didn't think that I would have any limitation whatsoever. Because I felt that it's a matter of you know my ability to engage you and, and be open and all of that. So as long as you are mature, you open up. And discuss a lot of these issues. What is about it? Why why are you afraid of? Why are you shy about something you are going to be doing anyway? So uh uh, uh we, we just need to uh overcome that. Yeah. Um, and then I I, I think we, we are good to go. Yeah. Thank you. Um the second question: what role does a man's current financial position play? A nice guy that isn't very stable but has good potential. That's the second question. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, this this one, I, I would have allowed the ladies to tell us. What do they look out for? If, for instance, when when you, you Adra, when you met me, uh, among the things you, <laughs> among the things you, you consider, uh, did, you, did you look at my financial abilities or capabilities? And and why that? Okay. If you did, then I'll come. I'll come back. Okay. So when I met him, it was important to me that um, he can make money. Not that he has money at that particular time, but it was important to me that he can make money. He has the ability to make money. He has a good job. He has the ability to you know educate and improve on himself to make money, that was very important. Not that maybe he has X, and X amount of money in his account as of the time I met him. But yes, if he can be a millionaire, why not? By all means, money is good. Money is very important. Money takes away all forms of argument. The last time I was telling him, he was saying something, I said, oh, argument there, who needs scan our argument? Oh, Oscar, you don't argue. When there's money, what, what, what are you doing with argument, you know? So yes, money is good. Money is important. But I wouldn't say that when you meet someone, you need to check his bank account and see how much money he has. Listen, if you meet someone, he's good and all that, and he has a lot of money, yes, go ahead. If you meet someone and he's good and he has all that, and he doesn't have a lot of money in, in account, but he has a good and stable job, go ahead. If you meet someone and he claims, oh, he's good, he's a Christian, he's blah, 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 and he doesn't have a job. He doesn't know when he's going to get a job. He doesn't even know what he wants to do for a career. He's spending all his time praying and reading the Bible and, and trying to, oh, young Christians have a school. No, that's a red flag. That's a complete red flag. He has to have a plan to make money because money answers all things. That's what the Bible said. I didn't say it. Uh, you, you, so my wife is saying that money answers everything. So, so, so I, I think that's the point. Money is, is important, but it's not end in itself. It's not an end in itself. Um, as she said, it's the it's for me, you see, the reason why 
I, I, I love my wife so much. And we want to do everything for her. At the time we met, I had nothing. I mean, my financial, my bank account, I, I don't remember if I, if I had anything in it. But you see, it's your so about your ability, your ability to spot some potential in the in the in the person. You understand? Be strategic. Don't be myopic. Don't look at just today. Uh, uh, how do they call it? Uh, um, people say they want Abin Waha. Fine. If you have Abin Waha, and like she says, she also has all the other attributes that you are looking for. Fine. You're fine. Um, if it's the B the B A B A E and the person has a plan, you know, as a, as a job and all of that, it's important. You know, the reason why money is so important is that sometimes I've seen and heard people who have had very uh, elegant weddings and stuff, and just after the wedding, they are fighting. There's a lot of debts that they need to clear, and if you don't have a stable job, you are in trouble. So this is very, very important. But please don't also let, let that become, oh, because of this. Because I didn't have anything that, you know, yet you had a she, job, you had a she spotted that potential that I had and, and then married me. So now, if by the grace of God, I have something, I need to spend it on her, right? So that's, that's how um, it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and the, the next question, then uh, Abi will come in. It's, the question is, on the basis of abstaining from premarital sex, if later in the marriage one finds out of possible fertility issues like impotence or ovarian cysts, what do you do? Okay, so the person finds out that this person had this problem and didn't divorce it, didn't it, say it. or uh, the in the course of the relationship, knew. in something the course happened. of the relationship, something happened. We need to Clarify, uh, clarify that. that. Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat the question. It says that um, in the case of abstaining, on the basis of abstaining from premarital sex, if later in the marriage one finds out of the possibility of fertility issues, be it impotence or variances, what do you do? So I'm guessing the person is saying we've abstained, but what if we... In, in our in our quest to abstain, we later on find out these issues in the marriage. What do we do? So so you're, you're talking about fertility. Um yes. this is not something that people bring on themselves. Unless, of course, this person knew that this is my condition before they got married to you, they knew that they were impotent and they didn't tell you, or they knew they had these health issues that could lead to them being infertile. They were very much aware of it and they didn't tell you. You know, that is a is a problem. But then some of most of the time, these things you find out after you are married and you realize that, oh, I have this health issue, or I have that health issue. That one, well, you've already said for better for worse. I do not know how you're going to um uh, uh, what excuse you're going to use because at the altar. You said for better, for worse. But when somebody intentionally keeps setting information from you, that one, that is a problem. Yes. And, and just to add to that, um, that's why I asked if later on, later on could be um, just the next day, for instance, in the, in the, in the case of the man, if at the, at the time of the, the honeymoon, eh, mm -hmm. even just at the honeymoon, you realize that the person, uh, I say, I say, can I buy a drink too? <laughs> you know, and or and also or double another. That's what we say. <laughs> you know, it means that the person knew about it, and 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 I believe that that's that's dishonesty, yeah. and 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 I think something could be done about. It. However, um, if in the course of the marriage, you understand, um, a health problem, you one develops a health problem, and because of that, renders him or her important or infertile, I do not think that becomes a ground oh, for divorce. divorce. Okay. I, one thing we all need to appreciate is that sometimes, and in most of the time, we I say that marriage ought to be prayerfully considered. Look, <laughs> as for facility issues, I, I don't think we have to be because nobody 
Children are inherited from the Lord. People have, have, are very healthy. People are very, yet they find themselves in that kind of situation. I believe that uh, God in his own way will work out something. If he does, he, he, he believes that or he wants you to have a child. If he doesn't want it, then I believe that he would, he would want you to create and live together. As, 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 exactly. To appreciate some, someone who, who has that emotional intelligence and maturity. To appreciate this situation so it doesn't um, uh, worsen the situation for, for you. But guys, if you know you have a problem, please you need to say it. Say it. You have no idea what through that person God can bring your life. So let's not hide that. If you do that, that's dishonesty. It's a red flag. And, and, and it can be uh, uh, a grounds for, for yes. Okay, thank you. I think, Abby, your hand has been up for a while. Kindly ask your question. Then I'll take the next question after Abby. Abby, if you can hear me, kindly ask your question. Okay, I think um we've lost that bit. Um, I don't know if I'm permitted to to say, but I am aware that there are other ways of um ascertaining these issues before marriage, and so oftentimes you hear the youth say, "Oh, if we abstain from sex, how will we know so so and so?" Fortunately, technology has made it possible. Um, I don't want to be a spoiler. Um, in, in the next um, discussions, I'm sure before we get married, we'll be educated about what are the things we are supposed to do before we get married. I know that at least when you are going through counseling, you are told to take some tests and all those things. So that at least you know the cross that you are carrying. But obviously, sometimes we become so infatuated and we skip that part because at the end of the day, I don't know if the counselor will you know, insist and penalize you if you don't do those tests. It's, it's, subjected, it's subjective to you. But even beyond these fertility issues, there are also issues like sickle cell and all those things. I'd like to know, uh, what do we do? Elder and Mrs. Some people say love conquers all. Um, do we still go ahead and conquer it, even in the face of being aware that we have certain um, illnesses that will have um, um, implications like sickle cell and all that. What, is it a red flag? Is it a yellow flag or a green flag? So um, for, for sickle cell, you know, when we were getting married, um, we had to go through all these um, tests um, to know our, um, our um, your, sickling. Your, your sickling status, yes. A sickling status. So it's important to know. Um, but then what you do with that information, um, that is left to the individual. Because there are people who have who who have uh, um, who are positive sickling status, both of them, but then they have had children who are not uh, um who are not sickless, you know. They are both they, are, they have two children, they are, they were carried, that less the, the, the better way. They were careers, but their children, both both of them, are not careers. So once again, maybe a couple of years ago, I would have said it's a red flag. But now I am careful to say it's a red flag because of what I have seen with experience, you know. Um. So, but you need to know, you need to know, find out whether you're a career or not before you make that marriage decision. You need to know. And and and, and again, um, uh, Anita, the Bible says, "Come, let us reason together." When you are entering into a relationship, it doesn't mean your your thinking cap is, is off. Okay? Reasoning is important. Now, my wife is talking about, this is a situation, when you are ASAS. Yes. Hello. So, um, when you are when you are AS, AS, your careers, but there, there's a 50% chance that one could be a child, if you give birth, that it could be yeah. AA and then also AS and then some 25 or so percent of the excess. 
But assuming that um, you are both SS, I can assure you, even though I, I know God works in miracles, but this miracle, you are tempting God. You are going to have a child that will have a, you, you, I, you, I don't know how you, the child is going to suffer. Your parent, the parents are going to suffer because you always have to be visiting the hospital and all of that. So sometimes when this information is made available to us, we ought to be very careful. We ought to be very careful and also prayerfully consider that. Of course, at the end of the day, the choice is yours. The church can come in to the family life and advise. And that's all they will advise. That's the, that's the best the church can do. It's advice. And the decision is yours. But I think you must also think wisely on that too. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Elder and Mrs. It's really been an educative discussion. And we want to say a big thank you for making the time. We know this will not be the last. It's the first of many, many more to come. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to all of us for participating, making it interactive, and to serve a reminder that this is a non-judgmental space. We want to encourage a lot of discourse. If we don't have it here, where else will we have it? We want to create an environment where we are free to ask questions and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we get the right answers. And so on this note, we are going to call it a night and um, remind us that we are still in the month of love. It's all about love. We want to learn about love in its true sense. The world tells us so much about love, but we want to learn it as God will have us learn it. And so let's make a date next week to continue our discussions. We've now kick-started the tour. We have ascertained whether we are ready to date. Elder and Mrs. have also taken us through the flags. Now, next week, we are going to navigate the dating and the courting space. Having identified those flags and taking the decisions, we want to know what to do during this time. The world gives us so many suggestions as to what dating and courtship is supposed to be like. We want to know as Christians what we should do and how we should navigate it. So let's make it a date next week and we will continue our journey. On this note, I'd like to ask our sister, Abigail, um, Abigail Ayikaiko to offer the closing prayer. Abby, if you can hear me, kindly do us the honors. Hi, good evening. And thank you to Mr. and Mrs. and Kansa Mensah for that wonderful presentation. Can we pray, please? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this presentation. We thank you for sitting in this meeting with us. And we thank you for the understanding you've given us. Thank you so much for Mr. and Mrs. and the knowledge they've poured into us. We pray that even as we learn these things, let us not just hear it and forget, but help us to apply it to our lives so that it can um, help us live more fulfilling lives. We pray that you continue to bless us um, as we live and help us so that we can interact in the right way so we can get the best out of our marriages and our relationships. Thank you so much for tonight. We pray that you give us all a good night's rest and protect us till our next meeting. Thank you for an answer prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you. So Thank you for having us. Thank God you bless you. Us. God bless you. All. And for, for the Thank questions you. we couldn't yes. answer, I know that some someday we'll come back and answer them. So pardon us for the questions we couldn't answer. I see some questions here that we couldn't answer. I'm I'm, I'm sure next time we'll have the opportunity to do that. So thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Kansa. We can take it in the form of a song. <laughs> is there is there a way we could get your emails or something we can write to you yeah yeah I'll, I'll send all that information to um anita and she would pass it on to you please what if we don't have contact to anita yes you can get my contact from anita yes i don't have contact to her oh, oh so okay yes uh, um so zero two four four no i want your email email okay, so um rm in cancer let me type so they can see. Uh, R M in cancer at 
at yahoo.co.uk. Okay. Yahoo.co.uk. Thank you. Oh, the Nkasa, it has H? Yes. yes, it has H. All right. So RM in Kansa at, at yahoo.co.uk. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Anita, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too, and have a good night. Bye bye, everyone. Hey, we got some to, to Ray. Okay. And everyone yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs>